Welcome to Language Arts Lesson 3, Introducing CSS and Adding Background. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of CSS. Uh, I'm going to show you how to add background to your story. And ultimately, by the end of this video, your job is to add background to your story. Okay, so what is CSS? Again, anything in yellow highlight is something that you want to pay attention to. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. So it actually provides the styles of a web page. What does HTML do? What does it provide? It provides the, it actually provides the content of the web page. And CSS actually provides the styles. So it changes the appearance of your HTML. Uh, what I would uh, encourage you to do is look at w3schools.com to see all the different types of CSS styles that you can uh, apply to your HTML pages. So we're doing uh, backgrounds today, but you could do colors, text, fonts, uh, all of these types of um, uh, effects or, or CSS you can apply to your HTML. So there's plenty there, uh, but we're going to be working on uh, a few things. But back to CSS. It looks like this. You're going to first have a selector like H1, H2, all the way up through H6, your paragraph, which was the P. Whatever it is, that HTML element is called your selector. Inside these squiggly brackets, you're going to have a property like color, and then you're going to have a value. So we're assigning a blue value, a blue font, or blue color to anything that has an H1 tag. Okay. Now notice on this one, there's also, I'm changing anything with H1 to have a font size of 20. So that is the style that uh, this CSS is going to apply to anything with the H1 tag. Now, where people are going to get stuck on with CSS is the way that you have to write it. So if you notice, you do have to have these squiggly brackets right here. And so, oops, let me go back here. Uh, those squiggly brackets right there, if you notice, they have to be there in the beginning and also the end. Okay, so it's the squiggly brackets, not the, the straight brackets there. You have to have that at the beginning and the end. The other place that people are going to forget is that after the property, you have to have a colon. So after the property, you have to have a colon. And the last place is that after the value, you're going to have to have a semicolon. Okay, so... 95 of CSS issues, when your CSS is not working, ask yourself, do you have all six pieces? Do you have your selector? Do you have your property? Do you have your value? But not just that, do you have, fourthly, your squiggly brackets opening and closing? Do you have your, semi, uh, your colon after the property? And do you have your, your semicolon after the value? That should take care of 95% of your CSS issues. So the other thing that you need to know with CSS is that spacing does not matter. So when I am writing CSS, I could write it like this, H1, I could put my squiggly bracket color uh, blue and then close it like that. That is the same thing as me doing this, H1 space here, color blue, never mind that it gets capitalized, and then putting it down here, okay? Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Uh, even tabbing doesn't matter. H1, you'll notice that most time in code, people will indent their property uh, and their, uh, their, their value as well. And that's just kind of good coding practice so that you can see what, you've, what uh, style you're applying to a, a certain um, selector, okay? So that's what you need to know. Uh, spacing does not matter. So let's actually get into it. I want to show you now how to add two different types of backgrounds. First of all, if you want to work with just a background color, let me show you how it works. Okay. So what we'll do is go to my story. And right now I've got my story. If you notice, I've got all of my tags in from video two. But where am I going to apply my CSS? I'm going to apply it down here click this and edit story style sheet, cascading style sheets, right? So I'm going to go there. And now here's where I can put my CSS. My CSS to add a background color is background dash color colon. 
And the first option is I can enter it in as a text. So I'm going to do uh, body. So I'm applying this to my whole story. Again, you want to put in body. And I'm going to put background color. And I'll just put blue. I have all of that, my brackets, my colon, my semicolon, uh, everything else is in place. I close that, and then I go ahead and I run my story. And then all of a sudden, I've got it blue. My background is now blue. Excellent. So there's a couple things with this is that I can write it in as a text like pink or blue or green. I can also enter it in as a hexadecimal value. This is just a more specific kind of coloring system, and I don't want to get into it, but I would say is find this uh, slideshow and click this link, which will take you here for your different color options. So you can get all different types of colors, and you'll notice that your hexadecimal values show up over here, so you can get it really specific. The only thing that you need to know is make sure that you copy that hashtag and, and, um, and put it over. So now if I go to my style sheet and I change this to this, click out of it, and I go ahead and play it now, well now I've just changed it to a color that you personally may like more. The last thing I want to show you in this video is how you add a background image to your Twine project instead of just having a plain color. The way that you're going to do that is you're going to have background-image uh, URL parentheses and a link to the image that you want. Okay, So let me show you how that actually looks. So for example, I'll go here since my story is about a school. I found this image right here that I like and so I'm going to do a two finger click on that and I'll do copy image address. So I've copied that image address. I'm going to go back here to my CSS. I open up my style sheet and background it was image and I have URL parentheses quotation marks close the quotation marks close the parentheses add your um, semicolon and then add your closing squiggly bracket. Now once I have that in place I can go back to my document I can go back to my twine and run it. And now instead of a color, I've got that image, but you notice that my image there is not the nice school image that I had right here. I like this full image. I don't like the fact that this is kind of like cutting off right here. Well, there's a couple things that I need to do to edit that. Uh, within my CSS, I'm gonna go back in here and I'm going to add a few more things that uh, will affect my background image. The next thing that I'm actually going to add in here is something called a style called background size. And I'm going to put background size cover. And now I'm going to click out of that and rerun my page. Oh, there's my page now. It's covering it. But if you notice, Whoa, it's repeating at the bottom. It looks like it's only a certain length or width. And then once that width is done, it repeats it again. Well, I don't like that. So there's another style I need to apply to my CSS. So I'm going to go back here. In addition to background size cover, I'm actually going to put background repeat. And I don't want it to repeat again. So I'm going to put no dash repeat okay so now that I have that I'm gonna go back to my page refresh it and now it's not repeating but wait it's not repeating but it just took the part that it started over and left it as white space I don't like that either I wanted to just take up the whole page and um, uh, not be like cut off right down here. So there's one last element that I will add to my style sheet. Okay, And that last styling that I'm going to add here is called background attachment. So background attachment. 
and I'm gonna put it as fixed. I want this image to stay still and my text to scroll. So now once I go back here, I refresh my page. Now, instead of the image scrolling down, it's just my text and that is so much better. It leaves my nice picture that I liked as the main focus of uh, the page. Those are the things that I wanted to show you. Again, just as a reminder, once you add background image, you may need to make sure that you add background size and put it as cover. There's obviously many different uh, values that you can assign and you can check those on W3 schools instead of cover. Uh, you want to make sure if that's not working to put it on background repeat and actually add no repeat. I just actually included some different values that you could put there. Background attachment, I want you to put in fixed, and you could see other values on w3schools.com. That's what I wanted to show you as far as adding elements. As I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, now your job is to go back and add either a background color or a background image to your story.